Hello everyone, good to see you again. This is a large tuba of yam and it is where yam, the one that you can consume. To get this, you require a seed yam to be able to produce this. And so, to be able to produce something like this, you probably will need seed yam of this size, maybe a little smaller than this. This is usually regarded as the certified CDM that will give you the way here. Now, to get this, definitely you need a smaller CDM, usually regarded as the foundation CDM. This small one, this mini tuba, or it may be this size, this will give rise to this, and this will eventually give rise to the big tuba. Now, the limitation in producing large tubers is usually availability of CDMs. And that's where our discussion is going to be centered on today. I've started talking about CDMs before now, but we are going to a new dimension, a new area. Why? Because for us to get this large tuba, we must go through this. And to get this mainly, there is a new technology, though not so new started mainly around the uh, 1950s but became very very popular from the 90s and the 2000s and that means getting this from vines from leaves is surprising right yes i thought so too until i started to practice it i've been learning so much from experts and I've made my own mistakes. And that is why this video is going to be the beginning of a very, very long journey. And I hope you'll be able to go with me in this journey. So we're going to start to explore how to get CDMs from yam vines. So that's what this video is all about. But I want to make something clear. To get this seed from this vine requires technicalities. There are so many technical things. For example, having to grow this under a very controlled environment where you have to get screen houses, greenhouses, and some technologies to be able to get this. I have been learning for quite some time now. Like I've said, I've made my own mistakes, but I want to start to share my experience with you. And for those who know me very well, you know that when it comes to technicalities, <laughs> I'm not so much a fan of it because I try as much as possible to go very, very fundamental, go low, to see how we can solve the problem without so much technicalities. Let's see how we are able to uh, manage with that. Now, you can see the environment where I am now. It's a little bit shady and all that. It's deliberate. We are going to start to look at how to find alternative solutions, options to greenhouses because the local farmer out there may not be able to afford getting a greenhouse. So we are going to be looking at alternatives, one of which I have decided to explore and it is growing these yam vines under the shade of a tree. And that is what we are going to be doing today. So ideally, to grow these vines so that they will become your foundation CDMs. You require a screen house, like I've earlier mentioned, and some technical things. Basically, they are planted in beds, raised beds. But I decided to do a little bit of modification. And that modification is to save space for me. Let's see how that goes. And like I said, it's going to be a long journey. You have to begin with me and keep following me now if you can see this technically or ideally this one is regarded as the the cone garden more like they are raised beds but they are in a in a conical shape i actually learned this from my brothers from kenya so shout out to my friends from kenya um I saw them using this to grow vegetables and all that, but I haven't really seen anybody use it to grow yam. So I started, I started using it for growing wear yams, and when the result is ready, I'll let you know. 
but I also started experimenting with this, using it to grow vines. And that's what we are going to start to demonstrate today. Now, you, 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 as you can see, the advantage of this is that we are utilizing vertical space. And how we got here, I think it's a discussion for another day. But it's very, very simple. It's just to get a strip of tarpaulin and just fold it into a circle, kind of. So it becomes a, cylindr a cylindrical stuff and you just arrange them on each other after you have filled soil. Now, the advantage of this is that I can plant all around. And usually, once yam vines are planted, they are planted using a space of about 10 centimeters. So, if you see this particular uh, cone garden now, it can take up to more than even 50. So, you can see I've saved a lot of um, space by using this. Okay, it's basically about one meter. It's definitely going to be more than... Uh, uh, 50 because it is about one meter by one meter ideally every, if i'm going to put everything on the bed the, the lower bed it will be far far more than 50 about 100 so i think i'm definitely going to get that or more with this space now i can actually arrange two per line and we'll have about two rows here at the end of it all i'm going to be using it to maximize space. so we're going to see how it goes and um, at the end of it all We'll be able to make our choice apart from this I, I invented something a little bit different and that is it so i'll just let's put the camera here okay for this i decided to just see how this goes because of what i experimented with um, a container this is a tarpaulin too it's conical i'm going to put something here that will be uh, helping to water everything in here and each of these holes, I'm going to put vines. So I counted the holes while I was designing these, about 80 of them. So at the end of it all, we are going to be looking at all this together. I have started these vine cuttings. At the end of this video, or towards the end, I'm going to show you the ones that are ongoing, the ones that are thriving, that I've already, already done. Now, that particular experiment encouraged me to want to do this because that was done in the open there was no screen house there was nothing and at the end of it all you are going to see how they are doing so don't go away make sure you stay till the end of this and there will always be follow-up for those who are interested there will always be follow-up to this video and please take note the advantage of this is that there is a high rate of multiplication of cdms from a particular um plant of cd and where you, where you are going to harvest your vines from it depends on from a particular plant you can get nothing less than 50 vines from only one particular plant at a time it depends but all those we are going to look at how we are going to achieve that and again another thing i also want to point out we want to see or try to answer some questions which vines can actually give this kind of cdms is it all vines that can do that or there are some varieties that can do that or some are better than the others all these questions we are going to be bringing answers to them so it's going to be a long journey but i would like you to always come with me because at the end of it all you will you will learn and i will also learn from you so sit back as we go ahead to harvest our vines to plants all right guys i'm here to harvest vines for planting Ideally, it is very important to choose vines that are healthy. I've uh, collected vines from here before, and I was particularly growing this for this experiment. This is about, about three months old now. Usually, you choose vines that you are sure will be able to at least survive to the best of your own ability so vines about 12 weeks old usually it's not like if you choose more than but you can get from 16 weeks old and all that but the one me have have tried that have really really worked um from eight weeks maybe 12 weeks basically because you need 
um, leaves that are at least strong enough. We are actually going to be doing more concerning selection of vines. There are a lot to know about selection of vines. But for the purpose of this video, let's just quickly do the harvest we can. So I'll just cut and um, All right, so I'm going to just take this, then I'll start cutting them into single nodes, single nodes, basically. All right. Now, when harvesting your vine, you have to be a little bit careful so that you won't have to damage them so much. So I particularly chose this because I've been grooming it for this experiment. And to do this is always important. You just get one attached to one particular, one particular rope so that you can easily just take it out. All right. Okay guys, we have harvested the vines and we want to start cutting. So in cutting these vines, is actually single nodes. So what, what we mean by single node is just where these two leaves they are coming out from. That's the only thing you need. Let's bring the camera closer so that you can just see. All right. First of all, we are going to cut and put them inside this uh, water containing some chemicals, anti-fungi, and of course, um, anti-insecticide. Uh, you can use any cybermetry insecticide and uh, anti-fungi. I normally use mancozeb. That's what I was taught by the expert. So single node means just taking just like one cm away from one cm on each side of the node and that's just a single node same thing here same thing here now i want to mention something here this is very important you see from a single node there's something that there's a particular vine that is jutting out don't cut it off because usually i'm going to show you the one that i have usually this two leaves they will end up causing root to grow and the vine will start to come out this vine is already coming out it can still get established after the root has come out to just continue to grow so try not to cut it off because that's very important i'll show you what the one i did and what has come out of it so you keep cutting until you get as much as you want all right another thing okay for example now this one that is already growing out i won't cut it off i'll just leave it with it so i'll plant them like that it has actually showed that it can germinate from there so that is it uh, this will take quite some time but <laughs> so one more thing i want to let you know you can see if you observe the weather uh, there is no much uh, light around because I decided to do it at the cool of the evening. It's better off to reduce the level of shock for my vines. All right. We have already treated these leaves, these vines. Uh, we want to just start planting now. Like I said, as much as you can, leave this. Don't, don't cut it. If it's going to survive, it will survive. If it's not going to survive, you still know. So what I'll just do is to, to poke a hole and just put and use my hand and adapt. I prefer to just, I want to use my <laughs> hands today. Let me, let it get a little bit dirty. So, so I've done this. I will, st I'll still put something here because this place is wide enough. It's up to. At least, ideally, it's supposed to be 10, 10 uh, centimeters. 
but it's, it's wide enough it can do the job so you just poke a hole about one inch deep not so deep you put your the the node and just adapt firmly of course so that's where the going to spring out from now this is a single node i'll just poke just put in here it's very easy to 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 really do you just adapt and your your leaf is hanging out that way so look at these two um shoots now are coming i will leave them i will not remove them just put in adapt and there it goes so hopefully once the roots get formed those shoots will just pick up from there so for those that have shoots leave them that is what i learned from the experts that taught me okay So we just continue. You can use your finger, you can use a stick. Anyone? You know, for us that are farmers, gardeners, we love to touch the soil. It does nothing. In fact, it's to a large extent therapeutic. All right. Okay. Sometimes, no matter how tiny the vine is, it will still, from my experience, to still germinate. Now, one thing I must say here is this. There are so many gray areas now and technicalities. We are only trying to make it as simple as possible. Now, what that means is this. I've always asked a particular question and that question I've always asked is what is the germination or rather the survival rate of vine cuttings so that question is something that will answer with time for those who are interested we'll keep on talking about this in subsequent videos this is just the maiden edition in some weeks months from now, even years, we'll still be talking about this issue. By then, would have done a lot. Because the major challenge with vine is rooting, the formation of roots. So, what are the things that we can do to make the roots form faster? These are questions we'll, we'll answer. So that if I plant 1,000 vines, I'm able to get relatively large germination or survival rate right now nobody can actually really see the survival rate of vines so we'll keep working on that but i have my own story to tell all right i'm going to go and show you now the ones that i have done previously and the progress so far so let's go there so guys we are here to look at the ones that i've done previously now this was in fact my major breakthrough i planted somewhere else and i decided to just put a few in an open place in the sack and this is what i got let's bring the camera closer what you are seeing here now is vine look at the okay i think it has broken off the initial vines that i planted so from here now what you are what you see climbing now is vine this they, they are the offshoots from the vine then, then these are older ones they're about uh let's say getting to three months now now this is another one this one they started growing look at them you can see how tiny they are but at least they are i'm feeding them in here this is just normal topsoil mixed with poultry dropping. Nothing else. It's not carbonized rice hogs. It's not rice hogs. I even tried rice hogs, but this one happened to be doing better than the rice hogs. So, and this one is in the open. I did not cover anything. And of course, you can see they are doing well. Now, 
I did another one less than three weeks ago. This one is about over two months now. This this another one that I did three weeks ago. You can see directly see the see the vines that I that I planted the the single node vine that I planted. They are all still here. This one is getting now. If, if, if as you can see, this one is just shooting out. Why this one has already gone up? See this one, it's going up. You understand? So everything inside this sack now, they are vines, and look at them. They are already going up. So what I do now is to just this one is, is coming up. This shoot is for this particular vine. This shoot is for this vine. So this shoot now is for this one. Then this shoot, this long shoot now is for this vine. So they are all they are all doing well. Now look at another one. This one was the one I told you about that it was already a shoot coming out from a vine. From sorry, from a, 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 a node, just one node. It was a shoot coming out from a node. So look at it now. It did not die, it just continued. And look at fresh, this is about three weeks now. Look at fresh leaves growing. So you can actually leave the shoot coming out from the node and it will still survive. Right? This is it. Now, I'm going to also show you another one that I did in a container, another container. Let me go and show you that one. So guys, this is the one I want, I want to show you. This is something I just did. I like to try things. I tried to put uh, holes in, by the side of this container. I, I just planted the vines in here. That's the inspiration. This one gave me an inspiration for this other one. So if they can actually grow from here, look at like this vine now. I mean, this node now, look at it's getting me, it's, it's bringing out a shoot already. This one is already going. Then look at this one. This one that you are seeing now so is from this particular small leaf here. So this is the shoot that grew up and it's going. Then, of course, look at this one. Look at the shoot. You understand? So what this means, there are still other ones that have not uh, brought out shoot. But of course, you see them, they are still green. It means they are very much alive. So what I'm doing here, this was actually rice hawks that I used here with um, some form of poultry manure and all that. Okay, now this gave me an inspiration for this. So I now felt that if I do this, if I just put the vines in here, the way these ones grow out, they'll definitely grow out this way. But let's see how it goes. You keep on watching if you are interested so that you see the outcome of this. Now, this is actually what we are doing now. The experiment we have started. If we are able to succeed and make these things as simple as possible without having to, you know, get involved in technicalities and all that, it will be a major breakthrough for, for us, the common farmers that cannot afford greenhouses and all that. So let's see how this goes. This is the beginning. More videos will come. There are more updates that will be given concerning this. But I'm sure it will only be for those who are interested in vine cuttings and how we can get something from that. I want to appreciate you having stayed this far. But please watch out for more videos for those who are interested. Thank you very much and God bless.